Good morning. For those online and those here, I want you to think about songs that have had meaning to you, songs that are relevant, songs that have been a part of your, your journey. As I stand before you, the song that comes to mind right now is Baby is Cold Outside. <laughs> Actually, it's cold inside. <laughs> Uh, but I'm hopeful in the new year, as we now have a $19,000 burner sitting in our basement ready to be installed, that when we come back to church in the new year, we are going to have a different temperature level, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> so offering time is coming in a minute, amen. <laughs> So uh, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and on the fourth Sunday, we look at love. And so using the sermonic theme today, United in Love, our love song, United in Love. Uh, lately, uh, uh, one thing you guys probably don't know about me is the song I love most is Silence. It seems like our world, especially living in an urban context, is so no no noisy that I just love silence. I love when it can be quiet. But recently, I have rediscovered music. And what really has resonated with me is music from my past. When I listen to what some may call good music, they'll say, oh, you guys don't know anything about music today, you know, but good music, when I listen to good music, it reminds me of what was happening during that time. It's like through the music, I can remember various events or very, um, various things that happened in my life. It's no wonder that scientists have found that Alzheimer patients, when much of their memory is gone, can still remember the song. I remember when Carol Bradford, in her stages of Alzheimer, would sit and she would look out at the window. And it was the hymns, it was the music that grounded her. Music is a powerful art form that I have seen potentially unite people who are very different. You know, when we talk and we get in meetings, we can argue. But when music is played, it becomes like a temporary bridge to one another. Music can lift our soul. It can make us ponder. Music is a way of expressing what we feel. It gives words to the human experience. I feel good. I knew that I would sing James Brown, and instantly you feel good. Yes, music makes us even feel good. So much so that when we sing certain hymns, many of you have felt something that hymn spoke to you. We have a book on the back where you can make requests for music. People haven't written in it lately, but it's there. Music not only makes us feel good, but in some cultures, it makes us want to dance, and it makes us want to clap, and it makes us want to sway to the beat. Music opens our heart in a very non-threatening way. In preparation for our exploration of this last week of Advent, Love, I remembered the song, What the World Needs Now, as a reminder that our world is hurting. As we come upon Christmas this year, we can see that our world, maybe even us, are in pain. It's not hard to miss. This song was written by Hal David, and the music was composed by Bert Bacharach. Bert says in his autobiography, it was some of the most difficult lyrics that Hal has ever written in spite of its instant popularity. Hal talks about writing this song. He had a house full of kids and noise, and he was writing from Long Island, his home to Manhattan, and that was the space where he could get that silence I was talking about. And he was able to think, and he was thinking about this song, and the first two lines that came to him was, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. Before he had gotten to Manhattan, he also got the chorus written. But then he says he went dry and nothing else would come to him. And every verse that came to him seemed off. And so he left this piece alone for two to three months. And then he came back to it. This was a song that it took him the longest to write. And then he realized that he didn't need to write about what love was, but he needed to write the antithesis. Lord, we don't need another. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. Howe wrote about nature and all that God gives us. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. No, not just for some, 
but for everyone. This song was needed in the 60s to speak to the turmoil that was ripping the country apart. It was written to speak to war and to speak to the civil rights. And Hal and Bert delivered this music to our country. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Today we find Mary's song shaped by Mary's experience of God. As Mary is greeted by Elizabeth, she finds a song on her lip. Two women with two odd experiences. An elderly woman way past the years of bearing a child and a virgin are now pregnant. Nobody gets them, but here in this space, they share a commonality. Their oddness, the uniqueness of their situation bonds them, and a song is born. Mary is happy. Mary is deeply grateful. Her son is one of joy. Her song is one of joy about the coming of her son. She sings about what God has already done. Mary also describes the overturning of the current system of consumption and oppression and violence. This is a political song as well. She sings as if these things have already been defeated. And Mary's song is the hope that God is working to restore humanity. That is good news for us all. Music reminds us that love is beautiful, but that love is complex and difficult and hard. Can I get an amen? amen? Luther Ingram says, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Talk about complexity. Michael Jackson says, hey, you really turn me on. Y'all go with me. You knock me off my my lonely days are gone. And Luther Vandross, the king of romantic love music, reminds us that love creates a home. And until there's love there, all you have is a house. I do not know if there's any topic that is more discussed in music than actually love. We are students of love. There are songs that pave the way for us found in hymns and gospel and spirituals. Some of them we learned in church. Some of them we didn't learn in church, and many of them got passed down. We heard our parents or our grandparents. We grew up in it, and they were singing it, and it just sort of stuck. Often someone will hear a song, and then later in the day, what do you do when you hear that song? You sing it unconsciously again. It's like the song sticks with you, and you can't shake it. Well, I hear some patty, and they'll start singing a song, and they're like, I heard this song earlier, and I can't get it. I can't get it out of my mind. And maybe so is true with our faith songs. They hold us, they ground us, and when we get ourselves in a tight spot, those songs remind us that love is more than a flying emotion. It's more than the way we feel, but that love sticks and love endures. We're reminded of the words of Paul in Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant, rude, it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable and resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Distinctive to us is that our scriptures and our songs, they call us to stick around. They call us when the going gets tough, to stay. They call us to stay in the ring. I was watching this movie on Netflix called Bruised. How many of you have seen this? Okay, so I'm alone on this one. <laughs> Some of my friends were like, Charlene, you gotta watch Bruised. Well, no, I really didn't. But anyway, it's the story of a boxer who lost a fight. It wasn't just any fight, but it was an important fight, and she felt defeated, and she exited the ring, living her life in shame with the bottle turned up. The movie is about her coming back to the ring to finish what she started, to regain her dignity. Too many times we exit the ring, but love really calls us to the ring. It calls us to stay, it calls us to stick in, it calls us to be present to life. It calls us to stick by others, especially when times are hard. Love calls us to remain with others, even when we feel super uncomfortable and we have no words to offer. And we would rather be any place else. Love calls us to stick in the ring and we feel like we are getting the crap beat out of us. We stay present to our journey, we stay present to one another, and we stay present to our God. Just as Mary 
and Elizabeth found comfort in each other for obvious reasons. Here at United, I believe that we have found comfort in one another. We end this year still working on the long-term sustainability. We have been around the mulberry bush, but we are not confused about one thing. We are not confused about how we're to respond to one another when tragedy and loss and hard times come. I have never seen anyone in this congregation confused about love. Our hearts, like the guitar strings, are always pricked and picked when we learn of someone in distress, when we learn that someone is going through, when we look up and see, hey, she doesn't look like, or he doesn't look like his usual self. And our community is filled with small acts of kindness towards each other. Like a couple of months ago, Judy passed out these masks. I was wearing this one today because it's red and white and it's kind of got a Christmas theme going on. Or Anne and Ina Grace making those Advent bags and making sure we all got our own. <laughs> or Joe and Maxine adorning our altar to make it look so beautiful. Or Billy sharing financial resources so that at our pop-up picnic we can have potato salad in addition to hot dogs. Or the council meeting so many times to make sure our church governance and our church is healthy. Or the worship team, including the media team, getting here early, putting in hours to make sure we are able to get a message out to the world. Or sharing God's love, making sandwiches for the night ministry, people that are in distress and don't have anywhere to lay their heads. Or people giving to a worthy cause when we say, hey, this is a worthy cause because they believe in it. We keep planting seeds of love faithfully in this congregation. This church, the people in this church are often filled and moved by love. Now, we don't see eye to eye on some things, amen, like maybe signs on lawns or, you know, some other things. But when it comes to love, when it comes to loving one another, we are united. We are a united front. We are united in our love for God's creation. And when we see each other, we see each other. There is a song that is distinctively ours. <coughs> and as we are living into post-COVID, I don't know what post-COVID is because there's another strand and there seems like there keeps being another chapter. We are still exploring what it means to love each other still yet. So I invite you into our song. I invite you to sing the words of the carpenter that we are gonna sing our song. Sing it loud, sing it strong. Sing of good things, not bad. Sing of happy, not sad. Sing a song, make it simple to laugh your whole life long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. Just sing, sing a song. Sing a song, let the world sing along. Sing of love there could be. Sing for you and for me. Sing a song, make it simple to last your whole life long. Don't worry that it's not good enough for anyone else to hear. We're gonna sing United into 2022, our song. This summer, a special moment happened for me as three generations, my mom, my son, and me went to see Aretha Franklin movie, Respect. My son was dismal thinking that, oh, this is about to be a boring film. My mom was excited, but once in her seat, she tried to go to sleep. I said, this is not happening. So every time she looked like she wanted, I prodded her awake. Josiah was glued to the screen. We now and our family have added Aretha Franklin to a list of the musicians that fill our car ride to and from school each day. I hear Aretha Franklin differently because now I not just hear music, but I hear her story. I hear the journey that she took to create the music that she belts out. Not so much very different from Mary. Her song was safe as much by what she had experienced in her short life as her hopes for the future spread among her. She was happy. Songs do come alongside us. Songs don't happen in a bubble, do they? Songs are born from pain and joy. Hal knows. Songs tell a story. 
and Mary had a song, and Aretha had a song, Hal and David had a song, and united, we have a song. And somewhere in there should be the word united. We have many songs that tell our story, our story of love, how we met, why we stayed together, and our purpose in the world. We know what the world needs now. We know that already. We know that the world needs love. And we know that there is not enough of it. And God sends us every Sunday after we gather together back into the world to share a little bit more love. So as we come to the end of another year, and I mean, did it fly by? It's like, where did it go? I invite you. I invite you to remember the songs that have surrounded you on this journey. They're very different for all of us. Maybe they overlap. Cut on the radio. In case you don't know, 93.9 plays continuous Christmas music. 93.9. Once after Thanksgiving, all the way through Christmas, all they play is Christmas music. Or begin to develop a playlist of music that you like. Or share a song with someone else. Or invite others to share the music they like with you. Remember why those songs matter. And let us remember that we are a song. United Church of Hyde Park, we are a song. The wine and sung these lyrics, everything that God touched is a song. You touched my life one day, and all my burdens, burdens rolled away. They rolled away. We too can be music. I know there's a song out there with my name on it, literally, but there are plenty of songs that were written with us in mind. What are those songs? I invite you just to yell out if you can remember. What are those songs that have meaning? Maurice. No, just the song. Don't sit there. Just the song. Just the song. Gotcha. Anybody else? A song? A song that means something to you, Danielle? Hmm? Chestnuts Roasting, White Christmas. Is it called? No, it's called the Christmas song. Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Anybody else? A song. Every year, every Christmas. Every year, every Christmas. Anybody else? Is this too on the spot for you all? <laughs> like, wow, there's so much music. You're like, Charlene, you should have given us that two weeks ago. Okay, Santa Baby by Eartha Kid. Okay, we got some kind of groove going on over here. <laughs> Rachel. Joy to the world. I was listening last night to this choir sing First Noel, and they were jamming, um, and that felt really good to me. Any other Christmas songs or songs? Sunita. Mary, did you know? I like that. That's really nice. So there's all this music around us, and all this music that our music team gives us, and all of this music that tells our story. It tells our story of faith. In 2016, a horrific thing happened, and I know that you guys remember it. A terrorist walked into a gay club in Orlando, Florida, and began to shoot. By the end, lives were snuffed out. I remember being so touched and torn apart listening to the devastation of families as they began to talk about what it meant to lose their loved ones. These were people people who went out to celebrate and have fun to music and did not return home. People who survived, who will never, ever forget this incident. And then I remembered how the world responded. Big, strong men from Hawaii came, and they did their chant. They traveled all the way from Hawaii with these floral ornaments, and they laid them down. And then they began to do their chant and sing their words. And it was beautiful. And a song was resurrected, What the World Needs Now. And over 50 celebrities were brought together, folks that could sing and folks that couldn't sing. And they compiled them together and they did this dedication. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last to the end of time. 
Let us along with Mary sing our songs, sing them loud and sing them proud. Let us be music for a crazy world. Let us deposit love like crack pots leaking water. And let us end this year united, united in love. Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs>